who the hell was Moses' father-in-law? Now, many of you are automatically going to say that Moses' father-in-law was Jethro. But I'm going to show you and tell you, and then I want you to go do the research for yourself. It's going to demonstrate how the Bible made mistakes and doesn't know who Moses' father-in-law is. Now, one of the problems that you're going to, one of the reasons why there is this problem within the Bible is because the Bible, one, doesn't speak with one voice. Two, the Bible was written by different people. Three, the Bible was written through different time frames. And so four and four, the Bible was written under different political regimes. So therefore, you're going to get different differences within your Bible. Now, according to most people who believe in this book, the Bible is the inspired and errant word of God. But the Bible was the inspired and errant word of God. Then there should be no mistakes within the Bible. So in Exodus, you have. Moses' father-in-law being given two names, one Ruel and the other one Jethro. And those are the ones that most people are familiar with because most people don't read the book of Judges. So they would not recognize that he has a different name in Judges because in Judges 4, his name is Hobab. Now, many biblical scholars have tried to reconcile this. Some biblical scholars say that Ruel was the Midianite king and all of the children are the daughters of the Midianite king, Ruel. And that Jethro was a title, a title of the priest, which Jethro means excellence. But that doesn't make sense in the way that it is written in Exodus when he says that, when it says that his father, that his father-in-law Jethro came and spoke to him and told him, you got to division up some of this power, man. You can't handle everything, handling everybody's power. Put some people, delegate, delegate. No one would say, hey, you know, uh, your father-in-law, excellent, and just call him by a title. No, you're going to call him by his name. The context of that verbiage is a name. In the same way that Ruel, Ruel is a context, is a name. The same way that Hobab is a name. Now, there are other scholars who are going to say that, well, when you look at the writings over time, with the change in the ancient Hebrew, that by adding different um, elements to the writing, it changed the name from Ruel to Jethro, which actually has the same name, means the same thing. But that doesn't necessarily work out because no other names were changed in the same way. So no, still doesn't work. And as far as Hobab, they try to say that, well, Hobab in the NIV is written as brother-in-law. In other versions, is written as father-in-law. So it could be that Moses and, and his father-in-law became so such great friends that they were more like brothers than they were father-in-law. That's a bunch of bullshit. Let me tell you something. When I tell y'all about my pappy, my pappy is a man who became my father-in-law. Now, he became my father, father figure in my life before the father-in-law part ever happened. Because when my grandfather had passed away, he took over that role when I was 15, 16 years old. He lived with me for a while and we became great friends. But at no time was he my brother. <laughs> he was always my father, my pappy. So that's some bullshit. Just say it plain because I broke her no bullshit. That's bullshit. So the Bible can't get it right. Is his name Ruel? Is his name Jethro? Is his name Hobab? And some people are going to say, well, that's inconsequential because the main thing is Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. If the Bible is supposed to be inerrant, the word of God inspired by God has no mistake. It's perfect in all his writing. It speaks with univocality. Then there should be no mistakes in it. And if there are any mistakes, then yes, then the story of Jesus in itself can be a mistake. If there's one mistake, anything else can be a mistake. And we know you read the resurrection story. There's four different versions of what happened during the resurrection. We don't know who was there. Was it the only person that's consistent is Mary Magdalene. They don't know if the angel was inside the tomb, outside the tomb, sitting on the rock. Did the rock move because of an earthquake? There was no earthquake. Did the, was, did the angels 
uh, call the, the people to freeze, that Peter come, that Peter and another man have a race, foot race to get there. It's so much. And then did he tell Mary Magdalene, tell them to meet me in Bethany, tell them to meet me in Galilee, tell them to meet me in Jerusalem. We don't know where they were supposed to meet. It's too many inaccuracies for that story to be real, for that story to be true. So even in that story, there's problems. It's a lot of problems. So who was Moses' father-in-law? Because of a, I like the name, I'm going to call him Hobab. Mama name him Hobab, I'm going to call him Hobab. Y'all have a great day. <laughs> and remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration. Hobab.